Well, we just came back from uh, St. Catharines, picked up a uh, little uh, Arians with uh, Kohler uh, Courage XT6 there. It's a nice little uh, push lawnmower. We're going to change the oil, sharpen the blade, uh, check, you know, make sure that it's got a clean carburetor, clean air filter and whatnot. It's uh, not self-propelled, but uh, for the price, we couldn't beat it. We'll get this cleaned up and then uh, there's not really much that we got to do. It runs, supposedly, but... Uh, we just went and bought it and uh, that's it. And then we uh, we pulled our generator into the shop here because we're planning on, see all that, that one by one tubing of the uh, the frame? It's starting to just completely rot out just from the moisture that's been sitting in there. We're probably gonna get a couple pieces of one by one, come in here and maybe cut right there and then uh, do the same on the other side and then replace it, weld it in. And uh, I believe, yeah, the other side's just as bad. It's even worse over here. So I'm planning to do a little video just about uh, fixing that up and welding that. So all we'd really have to do is pull the fuel tank, which is I think four bolts, pull the engine and the uh, the generator there and then uh, weld that up. Then we, uh, we also picked up this thing, a Mastercraft. It's got all kinds of faded paint, but uh, yeah, it's a two-stage, just a little guy, 524, nothing crazy, but uh, we got that with the Arians, and uh, it's not like we need snow blowers. That's the, the little bit of snow that we we do still have, but yeah, so we uh, we figured, you know, pick that up. The price was right, and we got the Arians uh, lawnmower and this snow blower for like a, a bundle deal. We're just going to uh, work on the Arians now, get the oil changed and whatnot, and then probably... Uh, work on this later on. Well, we got the uh, snowblower 524 here pulled into the garage. We got the, uh, that Arians, we had it up on the table there. Uh, we just finished it. We just cleaned it up, got some uh, wipe new on it, made it look good, gapped the plug, plug was good. Didn't even have to clean the carb, so we just changed the oil, so I didn't even bother filming it. But uh, yeah, we'll, we're gonna start uh, taking this thing apart pretty soon. So many boxes from all these Amazon orders that I've been doing, but they won't take them like this, so I gotta cut them all up. Yeah, so I'm just cutting up some boxes and then uh, working on that snowblower. So if you got a box like this, I just wanted to show you guys, the quickest way to uh, take apart one of these boxes if you're cutting them up is come over here and cut this corner here from the top to the bottom and then go over to this side and cut it from the top to the bottom. So you want to cut it diagonally and then you can rip these out, right? And then it just folds out like a fucking, you know, like that. And then you could just fold it up and throw it in the garbage. Then you're left with something like that. See that? You guys learn something every day. You can pop those too. So anyways, here's the Arians with the uh, the Kohler on it. We cleaned it up, shined it up, took some wipe new onto all the plastics and made it look good. Like I said, we changed the oil, gapped and cleaned the spark plug. It was still a new spark plug, so that thing is uh, is done. You know, like I said, there was no point to, uh, to film it because we didn't really do much on it. But uh, yeah, this thing's good to go. I'm going to take these 3 8 bolts off of the uh, the belt shroud there, probably uh, pull this pin get the uh, the auger handle out of here so that I can uh, take off this side mount. It's loose already, but uh, yeah, I'd like to take a look at the carb, see if that's clean. You know, this thing looks uh, a little faded and a little rusty, but a uh, little bit of black paint on the uh, on the engine there and maybe uh, a new coat of red paint on it. Who knows? Hey, might might make this thing look a little better. The auger up front doesn't uh, doesn't look bad, so I'm hoping that we don't have to do too much to this, but we got it for a real good deal, so I forgot to plug in that light. Hopefully now you guys can see a little better. You know, we're we're still messing with the lights in here. Now we got uh, if we come up to this one here. We got it hooked up to a switch so that we can just we could just shut her down, save hydro, cause uh, yeah, we don't we don't really do anything back there other than you know work on shit if it's in the, uh, the summertime or maybe the winter time we just pull it in quick time to get it out of the snow. But uh, yeah, so my bad about not having the lights on before. You guys can see here the kill switch is just you know, like it wasn't even hooked up to the uh, to the heat shroud, and they kind of just got this thing hooked in here like like this. You don't really need it as long as your throttle works. You shouldn't really need it. She's a little tight. A little rusty, a little crusty, but uh, choke lever moves nice, and uh, the throttle still moves nice. So it's just the uh, the linkage and the governor. The governor arm down there is a little bit loose. You want it to move forward and back, obviously, but not forward and back this way. It's got some use and abuse to it. Yeah, if we can't clean this carb or we have problems with linkage, I might just uh, change it over to a newer carburetor. But like you guys can see, it's pretty rusty. A little bit of lubricant will go a long way. Things first. As soon as you get your belt cover off, take a look. See how much uh, belt dust is in here. This is what I call belt dust. 
That's what I call belt dust right there. A good way to tell whether or not your uh, your machine is, you know, got a too loose of a belt. Back down here on the machine, we can see that uh, there's quite a bit, but uh, not as much as I thought there would be for an older machine like this. We got uh, our belts here. They don't seem to be in that bad of uh, condition. Looks like we got an old Kevlar belt on the back. Drive belt. So to uh, check the tension on this, I'll go ahead and get my quick clamp and I'll put it onto the uh, the hand lever back there and we can check the, uh, the tension of the belts. Okay, so as you guys can see here, that belt's nice and tight. Drive belt's got good tension on it as well. We shouldn't have to do anything with those belts. Uh, they should be good. Like I said, I always leave the access panel off when we test it up, fire it up, just so that if I need to make an adjustment, you know, I don't have to, to pull it off again. Yeah, so that should be all right. And uh, you always wanna go in here and just make sure that your, your belt guides which bolt into the engine on either side of your uh, pulleys there. You want to make sure that those are tight and that uh, they're not going to wobble or nothing. Okay, so I'm going to move this. There's quite a bit of resistance and it feels like there's quite a bit of tension on that. So a little bit of lubricant down here on this arm uh, back into the into the guts of the machine will go a long way, long way on that. After we get done with uh, the stuff that we're doing up here. We'll probably drain the oil and then uh, flip it up to uh, take the access panel off and uh, check the internals. Then uh, come around and your chute here. Make sure that you you can rotate it all the way around. See, she's kind of binding up. This one's plastic, so you're gonna get issues like this where it cracked. That's no big deal, but uh, at least they don't rust. You know, when you got the, the older metal ones, you're gonna get rust all the way here when they're metal ones, right? Because they only put little stitch welds in and then uh, the water, just like it is here, see that? The water sits there right along these seams and it just rusts everything. So uh, it's kind of nice that this one's plastic. The engine could also use a degreasing, but uh, since it's still pretty mild out here uh, during the days, but it gets below freezing at night, so we don't want to pull our hose out yet. But uh, in the summertime, we're gonna try to get uh, a hot water hose hooked up. So we're gonna run a hot water line um, out to where our hose connects so that uh, if we want to wash something uh, you know in the fall time or winter time when it starts to get a little cooler then we should be able to do that. Fuel tank looks pretty dry. That's the screen there. I can't get too much of a shot of it but uh, the screen looks clean. The fuel tank looks fairly clean. There's a little stick or something right there. Little little something. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, remove this tank. It's just these two 3 8 bolts here and sometimes they have uh, they have one underneath. They got that little guy right there so you'll want to go ahead and well we can see that's already loose but uh, yeah so I'll go ahead and get this off. Um, we'll flush that out and then uh, uh, flush out the line, probably just use the compressor there to uh, blow out the fuel line there. So that once I get this carb clean, or uh, you know, put a, if I have to put a new one on, then uh, I can just reuse this fuel line because this fuel line's still in good condition. And we'll know that the line is clean, free of contaminants, and uh, the fuel tank as well. There you go, Floydy. Good old tire trackers. More than just tires. I kind of fucked it up though. It's got a little seam in it, but that's because there's diamond plating behind this, right? But it looks good enough. Beauty. Okay, so we took the uh, the chute off here, and we uh, we used a little bit of plastic weld, and you know that uh, the crack that was there, so we just filled that in, and then we can, you know, sand it and hit it with some uh, Krylon paint just to make it look a little nicer. That only took a few seconds. We uh, drained the oil, flipped it up, friction wheel, and everything looked good. So I didn't even didn't even show you guys that there was no need. Uh, I'm still gonna clean out the tank, so I'll just pop that off after, and. Uh, flush out the line and then I still got to get the carb off. Well, we got both machines outside now. You guys can see this thing turned out pretty good. We got some uh, white new and some uh, black paint. We uh, fixed that crack with a little bit of that plastic uh, plastic weld. Got uh, some black Krylon plastic paint on the, on the fuel tank there and on the engine. Took some white new to the uh, to the auger guard as well. This thing come out great. I'll get a quick little clip of it uh, running. We changed the oil. When the oil was out of it, we flipped it up and uh, had a look at the, the insides under the, uh, the access panel there and the uh, friction wheel was in great condition. So we didn't have to change that or nothing. Here's the, uh, the Kohler Courage XT6. That thing turned out great. Again, a little bit of white new on the plastics just to make it look a little better. But uh, yeah, this thing still looks, looks great condition so Jimmy if you're uh, if you're watching this buddy this one's your machine now we're gonna be coming and getting yours and we're gonna be trading you for this one she's all serviced ready to go Run.
great. Runs awesome. Jimmy's uh, carburetor was probably running a little lean. He said he could light a fucking smoke off the, he said, he said he could light a smoke right off the friggin' muffler. That thing got so hot, so yeah, she was probably running lean, had a bit of carbonation issues, but uh, yeah, buddy, this is your new unit. Not new, but uh, there's your unit. It's all painted up, fully serviced, ready to go. Six speed. She won't take off on you in first. Eliminator performance. Take care of our buddies. Eliminator performance. Getting ready for for springtime, summertime season. Every single one of these lawnmowers is uh, fully serviced and ready to go. Starting with the uh, the Arians here. Got the Kohler engine on it. Uh, that's a push mower. We got another Yard Works here. 21 inch, 173 cc. Uh, again, that's just a push. We got a 22 inch Murray, six, uh, six and a quarter horsepower. That's uh, self-propel, front wheel drive. That one's got a brand new dust stopper bags, uh, bag onto it. We got ourselves a Lawn Boy here. That's also self-propel. This is gonna be the cheap one. Wheels are kind of wobbly on it. Uh, and this is the one we did an engine swap. It's a brute four and a half horse uh, that we took off another lawnmower that had a rusted deck and we uh, bolted it onto this um, this good deck here. We had uh, makeshift throttle cable, so it's a little longer than it should be, but you know, uh, it works, it cuts grass. Every single one of these lawnmowers has a, a sharpened blade. Uh, the yard works, has a brand new mulching blade on it, and the lawn boy here has a brand new blade on it, but every one of these lawnmowers here is fully serviced and ready to go. John's, I texted him. He still hasn't come to pick his up, but uh, that's okay. And we still got the, uh, the Eaton Viking here. Um, but you know, nobody's really looking for snowblowers because uh, winter's basically over. Uh, the Troy built's still there. We haven't uh, haven't done anything to that. I, ha I didn't rebuild the engine because, you know, I didn't want to rebuild an engine and then put it onto a brand new snowblower and not be able to use it. So I don't know. We might I might rebuild that engine in the summertime, and then we'll just hold on to it and wait until winter. Uh, the rototiller, we got to do a carb job on this. This guy's got the old school carburetor onto it. Look at that. Got the old school onto it, but uh, that engine's still good, and that's a good rototiller. Um, we always get the uh, the old Italians asking us if we uh, know anybody with a rototiller, and they don't like the small ones. They like the big heavy-duty ones like that. Really dig into the garden. Here she is, boys. Just the horde of stuff. All for sale. Well guys, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave me a like. Uh, make sure you're subscribed. You can click that center button right there and uh, check out some other videos that I got up on screen now. And as always, thanks for watching guys.